So guys, today we're going to be talking about the chapter 2. It's pros and cons. Did it actually improve our gameplay? Or does it actually have more cons than ups? But the first thing I like to mention is of course the lag that was playing the server for a little bit too long for my liking. How long it has been? Like a week or something? Of course it was pretty obvious that it's going to be fixed sooner or later. But it really did spoil the initial chapter 2 experience. But I guess we all received lag is gone achievement anyway. So <laughs> that's like the perfect payoff we could have gotten. So this is just a small mention, let's say. In the beginning of the chapter though, I did make a video about the synergy rerolls and how did they work. I was, of course, rolling for my Titans group build. And I have to say that initially... The rolls were pretty crazy, you were getting a lot of those juicy stuff that was working perfectly for your build, but I have to say that we're already like two weeks into the chapter or so, and I kind of got stuck on around 12k DPS, and I cannot really take it further, and this is mostly because of the lack of good rolls. You could of course argue that uh, my build is shitty, and you won't make any better of it, but this is totally not true. We've all seen the Titan's Grip build builds do some crazy amounts of damage, so this is definitely not true. I did read somewhere that they kind of made like a catch-up mechanic for like fresh characters, because of course the season is out for some time already. And maybe it was just it that we get some very nice rolls, because that was a fresh character, let's say. And now I'm at the point where getting anything of value is really difficult. Especially that I did spend quite a lot of marks already. Not only the ones I've shown in the video, so... But yeah, we have been promised that we will be able to play the game, not stand and roll for ages. But I guess it might have just been like an empty promise. Same as it was with the bad luck protections, which apparently I think that does not really work. I've seen same talents, and I'm not even talking about ranks now, just same talents all over again, even though it was supposed to not show up for like next 50 or 100 rolls, it still did. And it was pretty awful, to be honest. So maybe the synergy, synergy rolls are having the same issues now. Maybe they were released only in the beginning, like, you know, beginning of the chapter to make people try it out and stuff like that. You know, I don't want to say that Ascension Dev Team is, like, lying to us, but, man, this shit is just not working. <laughs> and I really would like to play, enjoy some raids and stuff like that, but people are constantly just spamming mana storms for those juicy uh, reroll scrolls. So the gameplay loop is just usually just do the daily quests in the open world and then get stuck for a like whole week in Mana Storms just farming scrolls and yeah, Mana Storms are cool, but after a while they get pretty tedious, so it's kind of counterintuitive to play what you want and do what you want in the game where you are basically forced into Mana Storms because you have to farm those scrolls for rerolls. I would really want to do some raiding, even with the pugs and stuff like that, but it's just really hard to find some people to do the PvE content. Of course, except for, like, guys who are, of course, some in some kind of community, like Guild or something, uh, that already have builds doing, like, over 30k DPS, and they just play with themselves, of course, because, you know, they are basically decked out when it comes down to the build. So yeah, just to quickly sum it up, everything sounded amazing on paper, but it doesn't seem to be working as intended, at least so far. Let me know, guys, what you think about all the synergy rerolls and the so-called improvements that were supposed to take our gameplay to the next level, which apparently we don't really see. When we were at Mana Storms, I can already mention that they were made really, really more interesting. I did uh, say it already in the previous videos, but we can, of course, bring it up here as well. So, yeah, uh, the raid ones, except for the maybe fact that the HP 
uh, of those bosses is a little bit overtuned. I mean, like, we're standing there smacking and just collecting hearts. Some of the mechanics from the bosses do require some thought, but it's not really to a point where you have to, like, completely focus on that or something. Usually it's just smacking, especially for the DPS, so the more DPS you have, the smoother it goes, but also the higher uh, Mana Storm's levels you achieve and reach, uh, the more HP it rises, so it kind of stays up at the same level, which takes up definitely a little bit too long. And of course, if you do get those extra scrolls for the time investments, it's not a big deal, but very often we just see that we're smacking some Zulguru boss for like 10 minutes, and then you get like one reroll scrolls, or maybe even none, so that's kind of awful. Otherwise, the Mana Storm changes were amazing, in my opinion. Especially the rewards. Uh, we do get reward. We do get more rewards for reaching higher levels, for killing more monsters and stuff like that. So Mana Storms overall uh, has been a big improvement, in my opinion. Which is nice to see, but then again, it creates another problem where people don't really do any other content, of course. This is this can also be made in groups, but let's face it, it kind of incentivizes more solo uh, playstyle than the group one. I didn't get that many mana storms done in the group, so let me know, guys, if the rewards are like more juicy when doing it in a group or even raid. Maybe I've heard uh, some people gathering groups for such activities, so mm, I'm just doing it wrong. <laughs> Next thing I would really want to bring up is like the PvP changes, mostly the uh, PvP damage reduction, which I think uh, overall was a very good change. The classic overall was very bursty, so with such big power spikes we have received this season, uh, this was like the best move they could do just to reduce the overall damage I've seen some improvements in low level BGs which I do which I do play a lot. Uh, also trying out some on level 60. It did kind of nerf all those stealth classes that could shoot you down or run you down from stealth in like a couple of globals. Uh, I wouldn't say they're kind of gone, but you know that burst damage has been nerfed, so at least you do have some kind of counterplay now to it. So overall, I would say a very good change. Same goes for the healings, uh, because it was also getting out of hand, where a Potion Toss build could basically self-sustain itself. I did play uh, myself such builds, so I know what I'm talking about. All the initial uh, healers that were pretty much unkillable, unless whole raid was sitting on them 24-7. So thanks to those burst changes also, uh, the dot classes are kind of in better position now because, yeah, they have more time to be alive. Whereas when you would be killed in two or three globals, you wouldn't even be able to apply your dots. So, good change overall. Let me know, guys, what you... Uh, do you actually like PvPing on Ascension? I didn't do uh, too much PvP on level 60, to be honest. But, I mean, BG leveling has been, like, one of the most amazing experiences I had in WoW in such a long time. All the random builds are not so many. Of course, now you can create, like, very powerful builds from scratch, thanks to the expansion of card slots and stuff like that. But, you know, there's still some randomness to it, so it's been great overall. And if you are actually playing some high-level PvP... On Ascension, let me know what it does look from your perspective because, Leah, like I said, high end PvP is not something I did try a lot, so I cannot say more. So let's leave it at this. Now, when we finish with PvP, we can now talk a little bit about the balance changes uh, because this is not only concerning PvP and it's quite important because, yeah, in Ascension. It's even more important because this basically allows the viability of the builds. And to be honest, 
except for like this TG uh, improvements we have seen. I didn't really see any like build coming out of the shadows and taking over the meta uh, after the chapter two release. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, I also have seen some amazing stuff for uh, melee hunters like Fury of the Eagle or the Savage Blade buff. But I'm not really quite sure if those like 10% buffs or something are really things that will make or break the build. So not so sure about that. Of course, I don't follow like every Discord and conversation and stuff like that or all the posts about like the build viability and stuff like that. If you guys have seen also some kind of new, new builds that are performing very well and well and where like dog shit or even like middle ground before chapter two, uh, let me know. I'm also very interested in trying out Poison Rogue myself uh, because yeah, assassination was like always the best spec I liked about rogues, you know, poisoning stuff uh, with knives is something that is very reminiscent and the closest we can get to like real word assassin so i will definitely want to try this out but if you can provide some uh instant feedback about those let me know and let me know in the comment section of course i would be grateful although i do really love like python's grip uh, improvements that we get and how the build eventually turned out even though i'm kind of stuck with it already but this is something we can still work on and i definitely will as we get further into the, the season i really liked what blizzard did uh, when they started to dish out like uh, pvp changes like weekly pvp changes where they kind of getting some feedback and then started tuning things up that would be amazing in Ascension when they would, like, for example, find some person that could take a look at it, make notes and stuff like that, you know, and then provide instant feedback to the team. And they could just, you know, improve something, like, on the move. Although I do realize they kind of look at balance from this different, different perspective because... They basically have a free pick at their hand. And, uh, you know, they can choose any talent they want. And maybe some synergies are really crazy at this moment. But we are not really even aware of those because you basically are not, there's like not no possibility that you will roll a perfect build. Of course, there is like very small one, but, you know, it's very hard to do. And the time investment is probably really crazy. So. If we could have like a test server or something to like check out if this build is even like worth checking out or something, that would be amazing. Although, I don't know, this season is very heavily about RNG, so I guess this could destroy like the whole premise of this season. So maybe that's why they uh, shut down the test servers. Because to be honest, I am to blame myself and I would probably spend half of my time on those test servers just figuring out different things rather than playing on the main server. But for the moment, for the time being, we just have to let RNG carry us into greatness or into some dog shit build that we're going to scrap the very moment we get to 60. Of course, I do realize that balance is something that is not easily achieved, especially on a, a game such as Ascension, where there's like boundless possibilities to try things out. Although, let's face it, like main things or the principles, how the b actual build works, are the same classes we have seen in Season 8 with the preset builds and stuff like that. The synergies of like a core from the build are pretty much the same. There are just some skills and talents that work best uh, when coupled, so it's still classless, only just in a way. Not completely classless, but it is what it is so far. I guess I kind of like this RNG, so that's why I still play it. 
although we were supposed to uh, reach the moment where uh, in chapter one this happened very often, where you get stuck, like myself now, in a spot where there's like very hard to roll something new. And when you're stuck in one place, you're not, get, you're not getting forward. So uh, that's the biggest problem at the moment, I think. We were supposed to avoid this, but it still seems to be the case. Even though we have more possibilities to like farm uh, scrolls, thanks to mana storms and stuff like that, it still didn't get rid uh, of the main problem, which is that synergy rolls seem to not be working that, uh, that great. Maybe except for the fact that uh, you do get your uh, rank upgrades faster. That's something I have to admit that works pretty well. I didn't also do like that much raiding on the server, so I'm not entirely sure what's the like entry level into, for example, say mythic raiding, like how much DPS would I actually need to be invited to group or guild or mythic BWL, especially that I would really love to do some classic raiding because I did it so long ago. But yeah, there's a very high entry barrier. Of course, you can just make some uh, on with the light or something like that build. But you know, I'm this kind of person that if I don't enjoy playing a class, even if it's at aesthetics, how it is played, how how do you feel about the class? I just I'm just not having fun. If, and if I'm not having fun, why even bother playing it? Games are supposed to be fun, and if you're forcing yourself to do something then it's not the right way. Of course there are exceptions, like for example farming something uh, to achieve like something special, but we're talking about even the entry level, so <laughs> it's kind of not where at it should be. So let me know guys of course as well what you think about balance, what are your thoughts about the whole chapter two things, and like I mentioned before if you've seen some rise in a class that didn't kind of show its power before chapter 2, uh, let me know. But I can definitely, of course, expect uh, some new series starting uh, in the future. Just in the meantime, why I hone my TG build so far, and maybe when we get some raiding, then we can finally do some new things on Titan's Grip as well. Something that was definitely a very big improvement in building your character was, of course, the art slot extension. So those extra four slots, two or four skills and two or four talents, are actually a very big deal. Now you have a lot more control over what you get, especially that now you should probably focus on like all those epics and rare stuff that improve, improves your build quite a lot, and then roll for normal skills and talents that are usually pretty easy to get. Like, for example, when you're going for a Dragon Warrior or something, you definitely don't want to cut things like Bloodthirst and stuff like that, because, you know, this shows up pretty often in the wild card. You may not get it on your first playthrough, like, you know, when you get to level 60, but then when you continue re-rolling, it's pretty easy to get, actually. But of course, this method can only be used if you have some marks of ascension stacked up or things like that, you know, or some friends to help you get some initial scrolls, because you will have a lot of synergies, but no skills to actually execute it, which can be pretty, <laughs> pretty terrible. But when you actually start getting those skills, you will see a very, very high improvement straight away, because you have important talents needed. Uh, for those skills, so get what you can from starters, then supplement it with like, depending if you play PvP, get some free CC from uh, level 1 or something, all the skill cards for PvE, just take cooldowns, or skills that can actually really improve your DPS, and then everything else will come naturally, because there is a big difference between rolling like a bloodthirst and actually uh, getting a talent that really does improve it. So I think it's better fishing for those normal skills rather than the mandatory ones. An extra four slots definitely help.
So all in all, I think that chapter two has been a big improvement towards what we eventually want to see in the classless wildcard mode. The first days were amazing, even though it was only like two or three, where we were getting many positive rerolls and getting the stuff we actually needed. Or maybe it was only because the build was very bare bone and it would roll out the same even before chapter uh, two came out. So not really sure about this one. But yeah, for me personally, I wouldn't mind uh, that many problems with the wildcard itself. Because otherwise you just need time investment to get your favorite build to work. The problem are, uh, in my opinion, the balance changes, which have to come out faster and more harshly. Like, I won't even be <laughs> mentioning, like, wild imps and stuff like that, that were out for so long, and the other builds not seeing any love. Like, I mean, if you take a look at the changelog and, for example, see something like melee hunter buffs, and then you only see that Savage Blade deals 20 or 30% more weapon damage. It's probably not something that will make the build instantly viable or something. But I do agree that the, ability, the core abilities themselves should be buffed accordingly to the things you can get that supplement them rather than uh, trying to adjust all those talents and extra legendaries and things like that that kind of supplement the core build. I think that would be a little bit easier. For example, uh, let's say uh, Bloodthirst once again. For example, it deals only 100 weapon damage in the beginning. So it's very weak. But then you have many very powerful talents available that can kind of buff it. And, you know, even though it can feel kind of weak in the beginning, in the end, this kill will be very deadly. So. And it's mostly because the core skill has been adjusted accordingly to the talents it can uh, actually roll, rather than trying to, you know, balance six or seven talents with all the modifiers that come into play and stuff like that. Just, you know, for example, for testing, buff the skill to its limits with every possible shit you can get, and then just see if it's too powerful. If it is, then tune it down, the core skill, like base damage, modifiers, I don't know, whatever. Just make the changes for the main skill, not play around with the other like five or six, because there's always going to be more misses than hits in this method. Just my f two cents into the current balance state of the, of the ascension. So this is like my initial experience with the chapter 2. As I mentioned, let me know guys in the comment section what you think about the chapter 2 start. All in all, it definitely have seen many improvements, but there's still plenty to work on. And actually, the most thing I hate about this season are the numbers. I just simply hate seeing such high numbers. Like in Classic, I feel like the level we have been in previous seasons was okay, and at this moment it's getting a little bit out of hand, especially with TBC on the horizon. In some time we're going to get even more talents, even more skills, and of course even more gear, so we'll probably reach something like 100k DPS, which is not really that amazing. It goes the same way as in retail, when actually the Dragonflight started, Sorry, Shadowlands, when it started, we had like around 15 to 20k health, which was perfect, like Wrath of the Lich King numbers and stuff like that. But then suddenly, at the end of the expansion, we reached around 200k. So it was definitely not right. The scaling is just too big. And even though they made a stat squish after the expansion, it's completely gone, so <laughs> they squish stuff only to get back to the same level once again. Anyway, guys, thanks for hearing me out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.